Hello and welcome back to BitBar and our uh, Big Blue, Capcom Big Blue, uh, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, uh, quick and dirty restoration. So I need to get the control panel now reassembled. I'm going to do everything except for the T-molding, which we'll do in one of the, the upcoming videos. So let's get this thing assembled. We need to get the joystick, buttons, and then all the harness ready to go on this guy. So straight to it. So we have our overlay all cut out and trimmed and ready to go. So this is a non-adhesive control panel overlay. I believe I got this one uh, from GameOnGraphics.com. They have the file there, they were able to print it. And then I just trimmed it in one of the previous videos. So we'll get this thing, that's got to lay down first and that's going to cover up most of the control panel. Then we need to clean the back side of our over, our uh, plexiglass, sorry, not plexiglass, our Lexan overlay. So let me grab a cloth to do that. So I'm just going to spray this down with Novus One, just our plastic and glass shine cleaner stuff here. And wipe it down with a fiber, a microfiber cloth here. Just to get rid of any, any dust on this back side, because once we put it down onto the overlay, any dirt that's on the back here will obviously still shine through. We'll clean the front side once we get everything assembled. So I'm being real careful not to touch the back side, obviously, with anything except for the microfiber cloth. Making sure to get the edges real well. And with it clean, go ahead and lay it down on top of the control panel here. situate everything, the overlay and the sort of control panel sandwich we've got. And the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and start throwing a couple of buttons in here just to hold everything down. And we're doing the traditional four, based on what I've seen at least, uh, traditional four super turbos overlay, which has red, green, and then blue. I'll verify those, those colors, but I'm pretty sure that's it. And these are just kind of standard uh, micro switch buttons for uh, wooden control panels, so they're a little bit longer than uh, the ones you'll find, for example, on wooden, or I'm sorry, on, on metal control panels. What these are going to do is these are going to help keep the the whole sandwich parts kind of put together. So all I'm doing here is slipping these guys in and then putting these the the plastic nuts on the back side. And I'll have to probably reorient the, the buttons a little bit once I flip it over. So that the um, so the switches are pointing kind of in the right direction. So they're just kind of being sort of loosely snugged up underneath here, again, to just sort of keep our work all together. Now I know uh, some of the uh, some of the players really like the what is that the the convex buttons. Um, I guess I guess you can get kind of faster button action uh, on some of the moves. I, I still, I mean, the, the, the way that I I mostly played. Uh, Back in the day, I feel like maybe there's some water over here. Getting kind of some kind of funky uh, 
looking kind of pressure from the overlay on the Lexan. I'm going to have to pull these back off uh, and, and check and see what's going on with the this. So yeah, so sure enough, there was a cup, there was like a drop of the Novus that must have still been on either on here or on the glass. So when I turned it over, it started uh, smearing and spreading out. Luckily, I mean, the, the, the overlay should handle it no problem. It's, it is coated. But I would that would have been bad if I'd left that sitting underneath there. That's a bummer. Yeah, it's definitely the Novus. I can see it's not clear here. All right. Well, better to catch it now than later, or let it dry and do God knows what kind of weirdness underneath there. Would eventually probably soak through this this uh, plasticky control panel material and and probably eventually start damaging damaging it. But we caught it. No big deal. A little bit of wasted time, but we'll zip ahead. Anyway, so what I was saying was that the way that I remember playing Street Fighter 2, I did actually play the original Street Fighter. They had it, um, I played it after Street Fighter 2 was out though, but I found it at a, um, it was like the, the local youth center. And I remember playing it and just being like, it's, just, I mean, like, I, I knew how to play pretty well uh, at that, that time. You know, just regular Street Fighter 2. And um, just being like the moves are just really awkward and hard to pull off. But I did actually play play the original on location someplace. Anyway, um, so yeah, so I remember when, when playing that, uh, you know, the buttons were these standard buttons. So that's the ones that I'm gonna put on here because that's the ones that I'm, I'm familiar with. Red, green, blue. Uh, yeah, so, you know, other players, like I said, they, they like the convex ones. I, I, I like these, I like these ones better. And frankly, I, you know, I mean, I can play Street Fighter 2, but I'm not. I'm not like one of the competitive guys. Alright, so uh, it's one side there. Let me get the second player start button. I don't know if black is traditional, but black is actually just what I had on hand. Should look nice. And the joysticks are black. You know what I didn't do, but I'm gonna hold off on it for now. Uh, there actually are um, decals that go underneath here, and I'll probably put them on at some point. But the ones that I got are kind of in, these are actually new old stock. But the problem is, you know, and this happens with new old stock stuff sometimes, but this is damaged here. So if I put this adhesive down on here, so that, you know, this, this goes around the, the joystick hole, and then, you know, each one of these goes, you know, uh, around these buttons. I just, uh, you know, I think I'm, I'm gonna be unhappy looking at this thing going, you know, I really shouldn't have used those stickers because then I'm gonna have to pull the stickers off of here and reapply them. So I'm gonna save this stuff for maybe finding a set or reproducing my own set uh, of these guys without these problems. I'm just bummed about this. That's just, I don't know, hopefully that's showing up on camera, but it's, I mean, it's really noticeable. And I think that if you put it underneath the plexi, it would become even more so noticeable. So yeah, that's, so I know about this. Um, thanks in advance for pointing it out, but I'm actually choosing not to do the ones because these are the ones that I have and, and I want to do something better. <clears throat> I 
most players are, I'm sure, not going to have a problem knowing which buttons are which, uh, you know. Maybe some people... You know, I did actually pick up the purple buttons. And I swear I have seen setups with these guys where it was like purple, green, and blue. I do like that. Uh, I'm pretty sure the red is correct, but the I, I do have these same purple buttons, which might be kind of cool to put in. Um, or is it red, green, purple? I don't know. Anyway, I have the purple ones too. I kind of like it actually without the uh, the extra graphics right there. It's really nice and clean. Uh, I, w I will put the other ones on. It's totally appropriate to have them, so I, I will. But it's it's not bad. I don't think without the you know without those instructions on there. All right, so that's all the buttons now installed. So we turn this guy over, and uh, let's go ahead and get the joysticks thrown in. All right, slip those guys down there. Need to pull this off so this E-clip here goes back on there once it's fully assembled. Exactly how this goes. So I know that that needs to go down there. What I don't remember is where this washer goes. It must go on the top. Go ahead and put the E clip back on here. There's actually two different places you can put the E clip. There's one right here on the end, and then there's one uh, down here where we'll have to push this guy down. So I need to make sure that when the joystick is being depressed that it can do and properly hits all, uh, it's an eight-way joystick of course, make sure that it hits all the switches just right. So that's player one, let's get the screw guys back on here, oh, nuts. This one went in just fine without it, so I'm gonna assume not. All right, so joysticks and buttons installed. Looks pretty good so far. Uh, next thing will be to reinstall the harness. Let's go get that. Okay. So I did label everything here. We've got two harnesses to deal with. One's the, the kick harness and one is the main harness. Fortunately, I did just sort of dump them together inside the cabinet, so it's gonna take me just a minute to unwind them. Of course, it's the grounds, the, the string of grounds that's being a pain. So that's the kick harness right there. The grounds are all sort of daisy chained together like this, so they have, it's just more of a pain when it gets all bunched in here like this. It's my fault, I should have put it back together more cleanly. 
All right, full disclosure, it is the next day. But my SD card ran out of space and it was coming up on midnight. I decided it was enough. That was enough control panel. Big blue for the day, but let's get back to this. Okay, so uh, let's see. I have the, the grounds all split out and then the, the main harness, which is these guys split into their respective first player and second player setups. And then the kick harness is up here. So I'm actually gonna leave the kick harness sort of to the side for now and just focus on the main harness. So I did label all these guys. So player two start, uh, fierce, strong, etc., 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 to make our life a little easier. And the harness is gonna come up from this side because the, the, the pivots, the, the hinges are down here. So the top flips up. So this is where the wire is going to come from. So I'm going to wire from that direction. And then the bottom ones are going to be our kick buttons. And the top ones uh, are going to be our punch buttons. So uh, starting off here, this is the player to start button. And I've left the original switches on here and right now they're just they're attached uh, only by the the signal not by the ground we'll run the grounds here in a minute but to start with here all we need to do is basically just put these switches into the holders well, actually you know what we need to do first uh, we need to tighten these things down and make sure that the first player and second player are kind of now you know what we, we can tighten them down later um, yeah, because I, I might need to adjust their position, so I don't want to crank these things down yet. Unfortunately, that means I can't use uh, the little uh, pal nut wrench thing, but that's okay. Uh, all right, so player to start. Ooh, just lost a switch. Not even sure what to, but anyway, uh, we'll find it. Bottoms are first. I always forget working with these micro switches. Yeah, you want to put the, the, the one closest to the panel in first and then pivot it because there's more flexibility on the the taller ends, the top ends, so that you can actually get the get the switches into their proper holes. Alright, so then let's see what we've got. We've got the joystick controls, there's up. Sorry, this is still going to be a lot of unwinding, so I'll probably fast forward through a bunch of this. So that's the main harness for the right side, uh, sorry, the, the player two side. And we'll get player one side. And I'll probably want to, well first off I can get rid of all this blue tape, which is just going to fall off anyway, and was only meant to be temporary. Then I may clean this wiring up a little bit, because I, I hate this rat's nest, it just makes the troubleshooting stuff later such a pain. But I kind of need to figure out where all my wires are going to go for now, too. And am I going to maybe add a some little tie down here or something like that? But I don't know what I'm going to do for now. So for now, I'm just going to let this rat's nest exist. And take care of the player two, or player one side.
All right, before, as I was saying before the battery died, uh, we've got all of our signal wires run now. So all we have to do is run the ground. And the grounds on these ones are all common. They use this sort of common line here, which is fine. But basically we need to run one of these to every single one of these switches. But it's a little bit strange. I mean, normally you get it and it's like, it's all daisy chained forever, but this one was kind of strange the way it hooked up and I ended up cutting it. Yeah, see they did this weird junction thing right here where they used a, this crimp to kind of pound everything together, but I might just undo that whole thing and recrimp this whole thing so it is just one line running the entire circuit here. So I, I really don't like the way that that, <laughs> I don't like the way that works. And then there's these two more here that, that are also, uh, three here that are also all grounds. We do want to tie all that stuff back in. The grounds, like I said, it's common, so um, I am going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and cut this and then recrimp it, which just take just a minute. Hopefully, actually, uh, assuming I have the right size uh, butt splices there. The handy dandy uh, Paladin Tools Crimp All Series Crimpers. These are, use these in the red tent restoration. These, I love these things. And what do we have for butt splices? We're gonna need the smallest ones, or we're gonna want the smallest ones, which are the red ones. But actually we're crimping a couple wires together so we can probably get away with the blues. You wanna match the, the gauge uh, of the wire uh, to what you're crimping. So like we've got the, the, the blue ones, which are the medium size, and the yellow ones, which are the big ones, for much larger gauge wire. And I don't have any red ones in here. Uh, red of the, the butt splices. Got a ton of red ones because we use those all the time. I am gonna need a few. I, mean, I think the blue ones would be fine. The blue ones are fine holding this right here, so I can probably get away with it. And it's either that or I use uh, Quick Connects, male and female Quick Connects on these. Uh, kind of like, like this, you know, so wire one in, one end, one out the other end. But it's, I mean, it's kind of a permanent connection we're making here, so it's not really the appropriate connection. Uh, and I've got plenty of the blues, so let's just use the blues. The blues would be fine. If this were in a um, a car or a, a machine that actually had some vibration going on, you really wouldn't want to use uh, the wrong size, the larger larger than you need size, because uh, the the vibrations can cause it to eventually rattle free, and that's still possible you know, in an arcade cabinet, but a lot less likely, and for that matter, a lot less critical. Uh, all right, so let's start by cutting these guys. Then we're gonna need to strip back the ends on both ends that we're gonna be crimping. And then since we're using a blue, we want to put it into the, the two dots, the blue, line that up properly. Slip this guy in the end here, right up to the insulation, and crimp it down. I'm gonna give it a little extra squeeze again because it's the wrong, it's not totally the right size. 
just to make sure that that's well and truly pinched in there. And then give it a little tug. Let's see if that's going to stay. That's, that's going to be plenty good. Okay, so that's one side, and then where'd the other side go? is now fully wired. Everything's grounded in this rat nest and everything is uh, has its signal wire in it. Alright, so now we're gonna figure out what the heck we're gonna do with the other side. Also, be worth uh, worth noting that the the reds actually come in a couple different sizes. This is the larger size, and this is the smaller size. It's gonna be really hard to tell, probably on camera. But so this is for the same gauge wire, but a different size connection. Hopefully that shows up. So the one on the top with the uh, insulation around the outside smaller. And that's going to fit on these connections a little bit better than this one. You can get these to work, but they'll always be a little bit loose by you can kind of mash these guys down. Uh, but it's not really the right way to do it. Better to use the, the right smaller size. Let's, uh, these are just grounds. These aren't even carrying a signal wire on them, so, or signal on them, so I'm not too worried about them dangling as is, at least for me testing. And maybe um, I'll come back when I clean all this stuff up someday. Uh, I'll go ahead and fix those guys so they aren't just dangling like that. But for now... It's still way better and easier to work on as it is than it, than it was when I first got it. So it's, it's an improvement. I feel fine. So there we go. Control panel. Wired. Buttoned. And aside from the screws, which I need to put in, I'm going to throw those in real quick. If you guys, you guys want to watch that? I got some screws. Or going into the panel. And since they're on the top, kind of holding everything down, I wanted something that, that didn't look terrible. And it's it's uh it's strangely uh, not easy to find black hardware. And I wanted to get black hardware because I wanted to have something that would be durable, not just painting it myself. So Got these black tipped, um, they're like pan head screws. And again, we're not doing the full 
all the way around uh, for every screw hole there, there possibly could be on here. Uh, because a bunch of these ones are really out of whack. They're not at all even remotely straight. And I want them straight. So these ones down the front here should hold the front of the control panel through the weekend without any problems. And there we are. It's a nice finish there. The black hardware, I think. Um, matches the, the black buttons and the, and the black joysticks. So yeah. There we are. Uh, thanks for joining me on this one. We'll, we'll have more videos very soon on the rest of this blue tooth. Uh, sorry, blue tooth. I actually just almost said blue tent. Uh, this big blue uh, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo restoration. Quick and dirty. And yeah, so thanks for joining me. Thanks for the subscribes. If you have any questions, happy to answer them. But uh, we'll see you very soon with the next video. Thanks, guys.